Hey everyone, good morning. I am Pranashi Akbar and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now we are going to solve today's read code daily challenge which is the axiographical numbers. Okay, so let's see what is this question and how we can solve it. So in this question you are given an integer n and you need to return all the numbers in the range 1 to n sorted in the axiographical order. And you must write an algorithm that runs in big of n time and uses big of 1 extra space. Okay, so what do they mean by sorted in the axiographical order? Let's say you have been given a range of 1 to 10. So you are not asked to just print the numbers sorted something like this. No, you are asked to print the numbers in sorted in the axiographical order. It means, let's say if you have digit something like this, A, B, C, A, C, B. So which is smaller among them? This is smaller, right? Why? Because let's say you will start comparing their letters so these are equal okay now you will compare the next one okay so from among next next one b is less than c so that's why a b c will be less than a c b right okay similarly if you have these two character uh, these two strings okay you will compare first characters okay they are equal then you will compare another two characters okay it is empty but it has some character, it means obviously this will be less than B, so A will be less than AB. So in the similar way, you will have to sort the numbers in the lexicographical order. So let's say you have been asked to sort the numbers between 1 to 10. So first 1 will come and then 10 will come and then 2 will come because 11 will go out of bound. that's why 11 can't come. So first all the numbers are starting with 1 will come and then all the numbers are starting with 2 will come and then all the numbers are starting with 3 will come. So in that way you will have to return all the numbers in the range of 1 to n in the sorted lexicographical order. Cool. So let's say in this example n is 13. So in this way you will have to sort these numbers in the lexicographical order and return them. Okay. So let's say your n is 36. So first you will have to collect all the numbers starting with 1 and then all the numbers starting with 2 and then all the numbers starting with 3 and so on. Right. And then again you will have to check, you will have to create numbers like 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2 till up to 1, 9. Right. In this also you will have to collect all the numbers in this way like you are adding one more digit from 0 to 10. It means you will have again 10 possibilities at each step. Now again you will have to create all the numbers at this point, right? Something like this. So at every step you will have 10 possibilities and you will keep on checking until the time your number is less than or equals to this n. So does it something sound like a recursive solution because you are you have different possibilities and each possibility you, you again have 10 possibilities you have to add numbers and then you let's say if you have added zero in this and then you have to remove zero and then again check for next possibility which can be one zero one one zero two one zero three so it something sounds like a recursive solution but in the question we have been given that we have to solve this question in big o of one extra space but because if solution can't be of big O of 1 uh, space because it will obviously use recursive stack space. So we have to think of some iterative approach to solve this question. Okay, so let's try something. So let's see your n is 13. Okay, so what was your answer? Your answer was 1, 10, 11, 12, 13, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right. Okay, so what you can observe from here is that, let's say if your n was 136, then what would be your answer? 1, 10, 100, 1000? Uh, no, because it, go, it will go out of 1. So it means first you will collect all the numbers which are just followed by zeros. I, it may be 1, 10, 100 or it may be 2, 20, 200 because obviously these are going to be less than 21. 20, obviously 200 is also less than 21 in terms of lexicographical order because 2 is equal 0 is less than 1 so that's why 200 will be less than 21 so that's why first we will collect all the numbers which are just followed by zeros 
Okay, so you can see how we will collect these numbers. Just multiplying them by 10. Yes. Okay, so let's say if we will start iterating from 1 and let's say 1 to n or 0 to n, something like that. Okay, so we will learn a row from 1 to n. And initially, obviously, we will have 1. We are always going to start with 1 because we have to return the numbers in the range of 1 to n. Okay, so let's say we will initialize our current now with 1. Okay, so we, let's say we will push our current num in our result vector. Cool. Okay, now we will check if current num multiplied by 10 is less than or equals to n. Then obviously we can multiply it by 10. Yes. Okay. We are observing everything from this given the exographically sorted answer. Okay. So let's say if current num multiplied by 10 is less than or equals to n, then we will simply multiply it by 10 and do nothing else. Okay. So yeah, 1 multiplied by 10, 10 is less than or equals to 13. Okay. Now current number is 10. Now again we will come, we will push current number in our result. Okay, so we have pushed this 10 in our result. Till now our answer is 1 and 10. Cool. Okay, let's also keep creating our result. Okay, this is 1 and this is 10. Okay, now again check whether 10 multiplied by 10 is less than or equals to n. No, it will go out of bound, it will be greater than n. So what we have to do? At this point, we just want to keep adding 1 in our current num, right? Because 10 plus 1, 11, 11 plus 1, 12, 12 plus 1, 13. Okay. So, let's also create a else block. But can you observe, like, after 13, can we just add 1 in our uh, num? No, because 13 plus 1, which will be 14, and 14 will be greater than n. So, what we have to do in this else block? So, we have to check if current is current num is greater than or equal to n. At this point, it is equal to n. Then what we are doing? We are removing the last number and we are adding 1 to it which will be 2. Right? Okay. So, let's say in place of this, let's say n was 21. So, what will happen? We will keep let's say 1, 10, then 2, 3, sorry. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, right? And what will happen after this? We can't just add 1 to it and make it 20. No, we will remove the last number and then we will add 1 and then we will multiply it by 10 because 20 is less than 21. So, in this way it will work. Like if our current num is greater than or equals to n, then we will remove the last digit and add 1 to it or the last digit of the current number is equals to 9 then we will remove the last digit and add 1 to it because we have to sort it in the exographical order because here 19 is less than 21 but we can't simply add 1 to it and make it 20 no because we want 2 before 20 so that's why in two cases either the last digit is 9 or the current number is greater than or equals to n, then we will remove the last digit and then we will add 1 to our current num. Cool. And it might be the case we have to remove the last digit many number of times. So, we will simply do this in a while loop. Let's say if last digit, it means how we will get the last digit by modulo it by 10 is equals to 9. Or what we can say, all our current num is greater than or equals to n. Then what we will do, we will simply remove the last digit. And how we will remove it? current num by equals to 10. So in this way, we will be able to remove the last digit. And after that, we will simply add 1 to current num. Okay. So now, take this point, we have added 10 in our answer. Okay, is it greater than n? No. Is its last digit is 9? No. So, let's keep adding just 1 with this expression. Okay, so let's push 11. Now, our current number is 11. Let's push 11 in our this. Now, again, check 
whether 11 into 10 is less than or equals to n? No. So, we will execute the edge block. Whether its last digit is 9? No. Whether it is greater than n? No. So, just keep adding add 1 to our current num and when we will come here, we will push it in our result. Okay. Now, we will again check whether 12 into 10, 10 is less than n? No. So, we will execute this block. So, whether its last digit is 9 or is it greater than n? No. So, let us update it and we will simply push it in our result. Okay. Now, again check whether 13 into 10 is less than or equal to n? No. So, whether its last digit is 9? No. Is it greater than or equal to n? Yes. It is equal to n. So, we will remove its last digit and add 1 to it. It means it will become 2. Okay. Now, we will push 2 in our answer. So, 2 into 10 is less than or equal to n? No. Obviously, 20 is greater than 13. So, we will come here. Is its last digit 9? No. Greater than n? No. Simply add 1. So, it will become 3. Now, it will become 4. It will become 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And after 9, what will happen? This for group will become false because it will run only 13 times. And you have already executed this loop 13 times. So, it will obviously automatically break after it. Right? And so, I hope you get it. We formed our complete approach with this sorted, with these sorted numbers. Like first we need to take out all the numbers followed by zeros and then we want to keep adding them. And then when the number is greater than or equals to n or is it, it is ending with 9. So, we will remove its last digit and simply add 1 to it. Okay, so let's try code this. I hope you get it. You might want to try its code first on your own because I have already shown you this pseudo code. Okay, so let's vector int result. And after it, what we will do is let's initialize our current num with 1. And we will start iterating in our n, i is less than n, i plus plus. And let's push current num in our result. And after this, what will happen? We will check if current num into 10 is less than or equals to n. If it is, so let's multiply our current num with 10. L, we will need to check whether it is ending with uh, 9 or not. Current num modulo 10 equals to equals to 9. All current num is greater than or equals to n. If it is so, then we will simply remove its last digit. And after coming out of this loop, we will simply add 1 to our current num and we will return our this. Okay, so let's try run this. Now it's working fine. Let's try submitting it. Yeah, it's working fine. So, now let's talk about its time and space complexity as well. As you can see, we are just doing simple one iteration in this. And the complexity of this while can be up to the total number of digits which are present in num. And it can be four digits at max, right? So, it will be four, just not more than that. So, its overall time complexity will be big of n and space complexity will be big of 1 as we have not used any extra space other than that this result vector and obviously we will have to use it because we have to return a vector. So, we will not consider this space because we have not used any extra space for solving this question, right? Okay, so yeah, this was all for this question. I hope you get it and if you still have any doubts, you can post in the comment section. I will surely try to answer them. Till then, bye guys. See you in the next video.